Hello, thank you for tuning in to my presentation on the lowdown and low fire porcelain. My name is Andrew Snyder, I'm a ceramics professor at Westchester University of Pennsylvania, and this is my current ongoing technical research. So first, for the vast majority of the ceramics community, porcelain is high fire. This means that when we use the word porcelain, it implies that the work has been fired at least to cone 10. Traditional porcelain is a type of clay with very few impurities which would lower the melting point, so it must be fired extremely hot to vitrify, to keep it from being porous. Porous clay is the devil. Most functional ceramics have a porosity between 1 and 3 percent, but some earthenware clays can be as high as 20 percent after they are fired. Porosity is one of the main reasons we glaze functional work. One of the inspirations for this research was Egyptian paste, which is a process in which soluble salts are added to liquid clay, which in turn produce a glossy surface on fired ceramics. Also, soft paste porcelain, which was used in 16th and 17th century Europe in an effort to replicate authentic Chinese porcelain. However, because of the poor elasticity, soft paste porcelain was limited to casting and could not be hand built or thrown on the potter's wheel. Like all of my work, the development of this clay has been an organic process. I started this project in 2011 in an effort to develop, to develop a black, high fire, self glazing clay to expedite a large project I was working on at the time. My initial tests were based loosely on the process of Egyptian paste using soda ash as a primary flux in the clay body. I experienced some success, but abandoned the clay because soda ash overly complicated the drying and wreaked havoc on my skin. In the summer of 2017, I came across my old notes while cleaning my studio and decided to incorporate this research into my raw materials class in the upcoming semester. The first assignment in raw materials is high fire clay formulation. So, so I shared my previous research with my students to gauge their level of interest. One student in particular, Sarah Driggers, was very interested and began working on numerous self-glazing high fire clay recipes of her own in my class. Clay and glaze development in general is an extremely time consuming and detail oriented process. So I was very pleased when Sarah agreed to assist me in this research. We began by altering some of my old high fire recipes, then substituting various fluxes. After a few weeks of experimenting, we noticed that several of the recipes looked more promising at lower temperatures than at high. For most of my career, I've identified myself as a high fire clay artist, and I admit to some ceramic snobbery against low fire in my past. I mention this in relationship to this re research because it was a diff difficult step for me to accept that the low fire work seemed more hopeful after considering myself a high fire clay artist for nearly 20 years, with all my previous research in the high fire realm. However, I could not ignore, ignore the results, and by midterms, I had gone all in with a low fire crowd. Our goal was black, vitreous, self glazing, low fire cl clay at cone 04 or less. My plan was to first make a successful white clay body and then add colorants to the clay recipes since the colorants had, can be expensive and do not dramatically affect the firing range, I thought. The ironic twist of the project was the discovery of translucent clay body. Translucency was not a criterion for my initial interest in this clay, but when our first batch of translucent clay was unloaded from the kiln, I was hooked. We mixed and tested 20 to 30 different low fire recipes each week for the remainder of the semester, slowly zeroing in on a recipe. By finals, we had developed numerous successful clay bodies, one of which is extremely white, translucent, indistinguishable from high fire porcelain, has a 0.01% porosity, and matures at the low temperature of cone 05. Here are some examples of some of our first uh, tests in the low fire setting. These were bowls before this, 
um, and we were using a thousand gram batches to to make our initial tests. So this was fired to 05 at with a, a 20 minute hold. Um, after we thought we had some successful recipes, I tried to mix some black glaze or black self glazing clay as well, and this is the end result. Um, stains and oxides do lower the melting point, which I didn't think would necessarily uh, happen, but it did happen as you can see here. And this is uh, a typical batch that we would fire twice a week of for the rest for the for the semester of I was making small shot glasses. Um, the thousand grams ended up being too much volume and too much work mixing. So we went down to 100 gram batches, which ended up being about uh, a shot glass worth of clay. Um, the image on the left is before firing, and this is how I would number all of them so when I could see them when they came out. Um, and then the image on the right is after they have been fired. And you can see that uh, a number of these had melted, and these were all fired to the same temperature at 05. After we found some successful recipes, um, I tried firing them to make them self-glazing to slightly higher temperatures. So this image here illustrates uh, how one clay recipe will melt at higher temperatures. And here are some examples of variations of successful clay recipes. And you can see a, a very wide range of, of color with all of these recipes. And I would consider these all successful in that they didn't melt. These are two of our completed recipes. Um, the one on the left is number 84. Um, we ended up uh, sort of weighing the um, importance of translucency. So um, the more colorant that we would add, the less translucent it would become, of course. Um, so these are number 84 and 87. This is the most translucent recipe that we came up with, and this is, I think, the blackest. Um, yeah, these are my two favorite recipes. In 2019, uh, we had been working with this, I had been working with this clay for uh, quite some time and had made a lot of work with it. Um, one of my students, uh, Maddie Consugar, uh, it was very interested in more of the colors, so she took the reins and she did extensive color testing with these recipes, starting roughly with our recipes for the black glazes. I'm sorry, the black clay. And this is just some of the examples of what she mixed. I think she mixed more than 200 recipes. Um, but it really is that easy with the one initial clay recipe, the, the, the translucent white. You really just add stains, and this is it. Um, these are all self-glaze at 05, and they all have very uh, positive throwing properties. They throw very easily. I've been using this clay for about two years now, so let's discuss this material in real-world practice with its benefits and drawbacks. The first and most significant benefit is the obvious time savings from the clay's capacity to be vitreous once fired at earthenware temperatures. 
while this clay costs about $3 per pound, it is considerably higher in price than all commercially prepared clays. However, I would argue that because the clay can be once fired and is self-glazing, the time and energy savings is worthwhile and cost-effective. Since it is self-glazing, there is significant time and monetary savings because there is no glaze to mix, no glaze to apply, no glaze to kiln to load, and no glaze kiln to fire. The older I get, the more obvious that any amount of time I can save is well worth the monetary expense. Since many of these recipes are self-glazing, it is possible to apply stains and oxides directly on greenware without wiping off after firing. This allows for easy incorporation of color and decoration. The process is very similar in feel to underglaze painting on Maalika. The difference is that there's no stickiness on decorating brushes from the oxides, unlike with underglazes or colored slips. The feel is more like that of ink painting. The most notable difference is that it's easy to wipe off mistakes and reapply decoration. I fire these recipes at a fast pace to cone 05 with a 20 to 30 minute soak. With a full load, I can load, fire, then unload easily in 24 hours because of the fast and low firing. This is particularly useful to me as a procrastinator. I consider this research to be a gourmet clay. It's expensive and can be challenging to work with, so some of the benefits are also the drawbacks. Since these recipes are very close to melting, it's easy to melt your work if you soak the kiln too long. Additionally, large-scale work has trouble supporting itself in the firing. I made numerous 24-inch coil-built vessels which collapsed under their own weight during the firing at cone 05. I fired subsequent vessels one cone lower until I reached cone 010. At cone 010, the clay is still vitreous, but is no longer self-glazing. The clay's plasticity is unique in that it is very plastic in its wet state, feeling just like traditional porcelain. However, when the clay is leather hard, it has the a very silty texture and is tedious to trim and carve. Because of the strange working properties of this clay, the addition of macaloid, V-gum, or bentonite is imperative to the recipes to allow for plasticity. Bentonite is an acceptable cost-saving substitution for the darker self-glazing clays, but will sacrifice whiteness and translucency on lighter colored clays. These clays all dry very quickly because of the large percentage of non-water soluble materials. I find this great benefit for small-scale thrown functional work. It's very easy to throw a batch of work, then make handles and trim in the same session. The drying is also the biggest drawback, however. Because of the fast drying time, it also does not age well. It will continue to dry despite being covered in tight bins, so you cannot leave clay to age for long periods of time without maintaining with a damp cloth. The longest I've left a batch of clay to age is about one month. After a month, the exterior surface begins to harden and become unusable. Um, I will say that the, the clay is extremely thixotropic, so it's, it can be re-wedged and made soft again. The benefits of this clay is mainly the accessibility of porcelain level results at an extremely low temperature. One of the drawbacks of traditional porcelain is that the temperature required to mature is at least cone 10 reduction, which is unattainable to many clay artists because of cost and kiln requirements. Cone 05 in oxidation is very desirable. Anyone with an electric kiln can reach this low temperature with ease. While not my deciding factor in developing this clay, I would be remiss to mention the environmental sustainability. Since it can be fired in an electric kiln, it is feasible that one could use sustainable sources such as solar or wind energy to fire and achieve these results as Brian Hopkins notes in his article, How Low Can You Go? Recipes. This is the starting point from 2011. Uh, this this glaze or this clay will self glaze at cone 10, um, and it becomes black on the outside and unglazed on the inside. This is number 74. 
This is the most translucent of all of our recipes. Um, things to note from this is you have to use New Zealand China clay. It is by far the whitest clay on the earth, I think. Um, that's, that's an important thing to keep in mind with this, with all of these recipes. This is the Cone 05 translucent matte base for colored porcelain. So uh, this is slightly different than the, the previous recipe, um, plus the mason stains. And I'll show you that in just one second. And then this is the recipe for Cone 05 self glaze base for colored porcelain. So uh, this, this recipe will self glaze at 05. And these are the colorant percentages. Um, note that all the stains will reduce its translucency. So um, for instance, the, the white mason stain 6700, five grams, while that is a whiter porcelain, it is not as translucent as the standard recipe. Join my email list up front to receive the complete Excel file with all the recipes from this research. Remember that sharing is caring and share your results, recipes on social media as low fire porcelain. And don't forget.